I was poached to go and work at a new magazine they were launching called Heat. It was devoted to celebrities and entertainment culture. We would do uh, an interview with a celebrity. In order to get that interview, we would have had to made an agreement with uh, a PR executive who worked for that celebrity, who then might even exert control over the copy. And after this has happened to you a few times, you start to wonder why you're doing this job. You're, you're essentially uh, working for the PR as a sort of freelance uh, promoter of their, of their artists. You're not really getting to communicate any point of view of your own. And um, this frustrated me so much that I began to collect the uh, stories that we weren't allowed to print. And um, when I had enough of them, uh, with my girlfriend at the time, we um, launched uh, an anonymous email newsletter um, called Pop Bitch, which collected these stories and sent them out to the world. We didn't charge any money for this, it was merely a cathartic exercise and we thought it would be funny. It didn't have any images with it, it was just text and we made a, a sort of a, a feature of its crudeness. We wanted it to seem, uh, again, a bit like one of those old phot photocopied fanzines, something that's very thrown together. But what was interesting is we um, we started to get people sending stories to us and we found a constituency of people who liked this kind of new candor in talking about celebrities and um, people who had access to stories themselves, usually the sort of disenfranchised servant class of the celebrity world, the, uh, the hairdressers, the receptionists, the drivers, the roadies, all these people, they would start to send us more stories. Suddenly we were getting enough material in to keep it going ad infinitum and actually 10 years later it's still going and um, the stories are still coming in. And the other thing that happened is it started to pick up subscribers. I mean after having just a few hundred subscribers for the first few months it suddenly went through this exponential growth and it ended up with hundreds and hundreds of thousands. I think it's got about six or seven hundred thousand subscribers now. And so there was this notion that you could get this tremendous amount of user-generated content out of people, and people would work very hard to craft their stories. But you couldn't necessarily do it if you were making money out of it. And, and so, you know, years later when um, Wikipedia appeared and started to become tremendously successful, I could kind of recognise the same thing. There was um, something that was a foundation. They weren't, you know, nobody was getting rich off Wikipedia. And that was why um, people were happy to to spend all this effort crafting articles for it. Popwitch, when it first started, was just an email and people would um, send us stories and um, more and more people sent stories in and um, myself and my, my, my then girlfriend would be sort of filtering these and, and working through them. And after a while we thought it would be nice to, to connect these people together. And so um, I went online and found out how to build um, a, a message board, a very crude sort of bulletin board thing, and I sort of coded it myself incredibly amateurishly and uh, created this um, web page where people could post stories and then other people could reply to them. And um, this really made a big difference to, to Popwitch. Instead of everything just coming through, uh, through one of us, suddenly it was a conversation and people f from various parts of uh, of Britain and then the world, it became international quite quickly, suddenly found they could have conversations with each other. But within these conversations, volunteer editors could flag anything that was interesting and then that could be flagged up for possible inclusion in the weekly email. And so when it came to write the email each week, you would simply be able to filter out a whole, you know, hundreds of thousands of words of conversation and suddenly have these nuggets that, that would make good stories all generated effortlessly and for free. You know, the old model I understood was that you create great pieces of fresh media by having highly trained journalists on salaries in an office. What we had here were thousands and thousands of untrained people working for free or working for an icon next to their name. And actually what they generated was, was great and it was very potent. And you know, suddenly this thing we'd started as a cathartic joke was a household name in Britain.